In today's video, we're going to be doing this little visual effects using new DaVinci Resolve 18 Surface Tracker. It's very simple to do and it gives really cool effect. Today's video brought to you by Raw Film, premium stock footage collection. Special thank you to them for providing this clip, making this tutorial possible. All right, so here's our clip. And before we're going to do visual effect on it, I want to do a couple things. So the first thing I want to do a new note, Alt S. And here we're just going to give it a, a look. The way we kind of know what we're working. So I'm going to slap a lot on it. And now we have to make sure that everything looks correct. So I'm going to adjust exposure. Okay, so that looks good. And another thing, I want to make sure that this side of the face is a little bit brighter because it's too dark. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to imitate a fill light. So I'm going to call this one a look. And this one I'm going to call fill. And it's actually very simple to do fill light. Uh, what I'm going to do is go to the mask and simply just going to go like that. Okay. Like this. Okay. And add in the primaries, just add a kick of midtones. Okay. I want to make sure that our uh, selection is soft. Okay. We can see. And another thing to make it even better, I'm going to go to the qualifier. Okay, we can see here. And I want to make sure that we only affect the darker side of the image. So something like that. We're going to add a little softening. And I'm going to crank up blur to kind of feather out the edges. Okay, so let's check it out before and after. And that makes huge difference. Now, if you notice our eye got a little bit softer and how we can fight that, if we go to the log settings, we can actually um, reduce the range of the log and just slightly drop shadow, just like that. So now our contrast is on par with another side. Okay, maybe even more. Alright, so that looks good to me. And now we're going to go to the window, make sure everything's there. And I'm going to uncheck perspective, rotation, and zoom. And we're going to track this thing. So we have a very nice image. So let's take a look. And everything looks very, very nice. Okay, I'm going to actually increase the mask a little bit more and that way we cover the whole thing okay looks cool so i'm gonna save that all right now we're gonna go to effects and we're gonna drop surface tracker on our um, node tree okay just like that and the first thing i want to do i want to specify the area that's going to be affected and usually i recommend picking a very nice frame that's free of any kind of obstacles or anything like that. Uh, free without any motion blur. So this shot looks really good over here. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to start drawing, basically specifying the area that I'm going to be affecting with my effect. Okay, Even though it's a basic effect, but again, this is tutorial and you'll get the point. All right, so that looks good. Now let's go to the mesh. In the mesh, make sure that you have selected uniform grid instead of point location, instead of automatic, select uniform grid because this kind of selection may not give us a good result for our grid. Okay, boom, just like that. Now let's go to the track. You can leave default settings uh, for this kind of area, it should be all right. However, in your case, you may want to play around with it. Maybe you'll get a better result. Now click on track. And in the track, the only thing I'm going to change is the quality I'm going to change to better. Because what I noticed playing around with this new surface tracker, 
the better quality gives much cleaner track. Okay, so everything looks good, and now we're simply going to click track back and forth, and depending on the power of our mighty computers, it may be quick, or it may take a little bit. In any case, we have no choice, so let's wait. All right, well, that took a solid minute. However, it kind of looks good, so let me just play it back. Okay, let's play it back and see if we have any kind of wobbling or anything like that. That actually looks pretty good, relatively. Okay, so that's fine. So what's, uh, what's our next step? Well, the next step going to be is to create a plate. And uh, let me click here so we can see her eye. And in the plate, I basically want to have her eye closed. So this is going to be the frame for the plate that we're going to be creating. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find a good shot over here. Uh, all right, this looks good, good frame. Right click, and I'm going to click grab still. Okay, now I'm going to grab still, and we can see that still image now in the gallery. So now I have to open this image in the Photoshop or any other editing software that we want to you know, add uh, blood maybe or whatever, and then we're going to bring it back. So now I'm going to select, I'm going to export, and uh, for the sake of tutorial, we're going to do desktop, okay, TIFF, we're going to call this one face, okay, and I'm going to click export. So the next step is going to be Photoshop. Okay, so here we have our shot now open in Photoshop. And I'm not going to be doing tutorial on the Photoshop. I'm actually going to do a very basic thing. Um, I don't know. We'll go to filter. Let's see. Liquify. We'll just do some messing with the, with the liquify. Uh, maybe like pull her eye down to kind of, you know, if let's say we're creating like a monster or something like that. All right. So that looks cool. Another thing, um, I noticed that the lighting on her eye is changing. So we've got to make sure we'll take care of that because it's not going to look natural. So with the patch tool, I'm just going to select that and just uh, move it here. Really quick, want to patch this area so it doesn't look weird or anything like that. All right, and maybe we can do dodge and burn. Maybe we can, like, make the eye look dark, something like that. Maybe we can add blood, but it's up to you. This is just demonstration. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a VFX artist, really, so I used to do that a long time ago. All right, so I think that looks good. Okay. Maybe, maybe actually we can pull it down a little more. Maybe some, something terrible happened. Don't show it to your model. They, they get upset when they see this kind of stuff. All right. So that looks great. Now I'm going to click Save. Okay. And we're going to go back to DaVinci Resolve now that we have this. And again, in your case, you want to add blood or stitches or whatever you want. This is just demonstration. Okay. So those... Adobe Photoshop professionals don't don't get excited. Okay, this is just a demo All right, so I'm gonna close this now. We're back in the Vint Resolve So what I need to do next is go to the media Go to my desktop and select face. Okay, so this is our face. I'm gonna right-click and I'm gonna select add to media pool as a mat so this is going to be our mat for the visual effect. So now I'm going to go back to our uh, color page. And in the color page, I'm going to create a new node. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select add mats, timeline mats, and I'm going to select face. Okay. Now I'm going to delete this node. I'm going to put our mat over here. Okay, so we understand our little tree. So this is fill light. This is our look. This is our VFX. Okay, and I'm going to connect the blue to the blue line. And then I'm going to connect 
RGB to the green, okay? Boom. So now we have this patch going on. So now I'm going to select our surface. I'm going to go to results. And now in the results, we're going to have to do a compositing. So there's a few things that we can adjust. And by the way, I think as of right now, this version, this is very, very cluster like. Uh, it's not intuitive to work. So Da Vinci guys, if you're watching this, please do something about it. So positioning, we're going to have to change to sliders. And with the sliders, I'm going to basically navigate and try to kind of match the position of the eye over here. So that looks all right. The compositing, let's see, it's set on normal. Let's see, add. Add doesn't look too good. Let's see, screen. Uh, screen or normal? Ah, let's leave it at normal. Normal looks all right. Okay, now let's introduce some softness. Okay. And the biggest thing going to be is to make sure that we're matching the position correctly because it's going to be very, very important. So, like that. Let's see. So, like this. And then we can shrink it a little bit. We can make it even softer. Okay, and let's lift it up just a tiny bit. Okay. So, I think that looks good. And let's play it back. And here we have our disfigurement effect sticking to the model. Now, the only complaint so far about this tool, that this tool doesn't have, for example, if you use Boris Mocha, the Mocha can automatically actually adjust to the change of light. In this case, unfortunately, this tool doesn't have that. So the lighting is good here. Here's a perfect blend. But once the model start moving, we can see actually the patch area. And as of right now, there's no other way of fixing this, uh, at least not that I know. We can do this manually by animating keyframes. But again, if anybody from Blackmagic watching this, please add this tool that we can sort of automatically match it to the change of lighting when the subject is moving. Because here we have perfect, and then boom, we can see how big of a difference that is right here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.